The next set of adjustments we're going to take a look at is the color enhancement section. First we have vibrance and vibrance is a function of brightening the color but it works differently than saturation. First of all with vibrance as we move the slider to the right it will increase the colors just subtly. The whole object of vibrance is to maintain the pixel integrity of the image but just boost the color slightly so it functions primarily with the color areas in the highlights and a little bit in the midtones whereas with saturation saturation increases the color globally so you'll notice that everything is getting more saturated brighter all of that together there are some occasions where saturation can make sense to increase your color slightly I use vibrance all the time uh, in just giving my photographs a little bit of an extra kick like if you're taking pictures in the fall and the trees have color in them just increasing the vibrance a little bit will still allow the photograph to look real but just boost up those colors and there's advantages to doing that because our camera sensors can't always record the colors as we see them and so tools like vibrance and even saturation give us the ability to add some of that brightness and snap back into our colors. The next tool is hue and saturation and saturation in this configuration works exactly the same. The lightness control works exactly the same as we saw in levels, the, the bottom area that we saw in levels. The big difference in this tool is working with hue and this literally gives us the ability to shift the color scheme globally. So if I left mouse click and drag the cursor to the right, it shifts the hue of the entire image. So all the pixels are being affected accordingly. Same way if I go to the right. And you can achieve some pretty cool effects this way. Even if you're working in graphics and not photographs, a hue shift can really come in handy as well. And once again, you can affect the hue in just individual color schemes or across the board with the master. Now with saturation together with hue it allows you to brighten the colors or desaturate them. The more you move the slider to the left the less color shows in the original image. The more you move it to the right the more color shows. And then lightness again is a global brightening or darkening of the image. Now there's another feature in hue and saturation and that's colorize it's off by default and if I click it and turn it on essentially what it does is it applies a single color to the overall picture very similar to what we saw with duotone except this is just one, one color and we can choose what that color is by moving the hue throughout the range and you'll notice that the color corresponds to what you're seeing in this on the rainbow slider here and then you also have control over how it's being applied from a saturated perspective. So if I have a black or a full color picture and I want to just turn it to say an orange like this, Colorize gives me the ability to do that very easy. And by the way, it also works equally as well using black and white photographs. And of course, as always, there's presets that you can achieve specific effects like if you want your photograph to look like a cyanotype you can click that preset and it automatically sets everything so that it appears that way. There are also let's say you have a certain setting that you really like a lot and you want to keep that you can actually save that preset and if you click save it'll give you the ability to name that preset and then it'll store it up here in this area so that you can go back to it and just apply it over and over again to your image. The next tool we have is color balance and color balance gives you the ability to make color tweaks to the different areas shadow, midtone, and highlight. So you notice right now midtones is selected. Let's say that I want to just affect the color shading on the shadows. If I click shadow You'll notice that I have a cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue. And the more I move the slider to the left, the more yellow is introduced into the shadow area. If I move it to the right, the more blue is introduced to the shadow area. Same with 
the magenta versus the green, cyan versus red. So you can get very specific with these. If I choose highlights, it's primarily going to target the lighter areas of the picture. Okay. So using these three levels, midtone, highlight, and shadow, you can get very specific in adjusting certain parts of your photograph or image in a way that the other tools can't mirror. Okay, and then once you're happy with how they appear, you can just click OK. The next tool in this section is black and white. And the black and white is different than what we saw with grayscale. It's also different than desaturate because you have the ability to control how the black and white is being converted. And what I mean by that is, remember back when we all used film. If we were shooting with black and white film, putting a filter on the front of our lens controlled how the light was striking the the film and so as a result if we had a red filter on the landscape appeared one way versus if we had a green one on well this set of controls mimics that exact same process so for instance on this particular picture if i increase the blue you notice that because there was a lot of blue in the sky it starts to blow the sky out but it really doesn't affect the other areas that much same with the red. If I increase the red, because there's red in this area of the rocks, it actually starts to lighten it up or to darken it. So it gives me the ability to control how the black and white is being converted based upon these colors. Okay, And there's also presets, and you can see, like high contrast blue filter, it's blowing out the sky almost completely, but you can see how the settings are set. Same with uh, high contrast red or infrared. If you wanted to mimic the effect of infrared, you could choose that preset. And so literally, regardless of whatever photograph or image that you're working on, you can control exactly what is being shifted into the grayscale arena at the different color levels. So if you have a picture, let's say, that has a lot of yellows in it, you may want to preserve those whenever you're converting it to black and white. And so that may mean turning the yellow section back, but enhancing the blues. If, let's say, that there's a really strong blue sky, by moving the blue slider to the left, you can darken the sky, but keep the tonal range of every other part of the image completely intact. So that's the power of working with the black and white conversion part of the sliders here. Next in the color adjustment section we have photo filter and this is kind of similar to the conversion process except that again when we used film there were different kinds of film like there was daylight film there was tungsten film and if you use daylight film indoors the end result tended to look a little on the cool side or a little blue. And to compensate for that, we would screw different types of filters, on, again, onto the front of our lens, like a number 85 warming filter or a number 81. And we could also achieve special effects using different filters that we would add to the front of the lens. These photo filters essentially work the same way. Okay, so you notice if I apply the cooling filter 82, it globally affects the entire image as if there was an 82 filter on the front of your camera. Same with green, okay, or deep red. And you would think, right, that it would just be, bam, there's this deep red. But you notice that you can control the density. So you have control over how much your image is being impacted based on the filter that you're choosing because it may just be a subtle shift that you want to make. You know, like let's say we want to warm this up a little bit. Say with an 81 warming filter, you'll notice that if I move it to the right, it warms it up a lot. And by warm means shifts it to the yellow versus the blue. So maybe I just want to shift the image slightly, say 23%. You'll notice if I click the preview on and off, how it just appears a little bit more bright with the warming filter applied. 
The next filter in this section is Channel Mixer. And Channel Mixer isn't a setting that you'll probably use very often. It just gives you the ability to shift the red, green, and blue channels in some pretty funky ways. And again, there's presets and you can achieve similar results like you did with some of the other filters. Like if I choose black and white with an orange filter, it's just a different form of conversion process. But in this case, instead of converting the image based upon what we used to use as normal filters like red, green, blue, and yellow, and so on, it makes the conversion happen based upon the RGB channels, the red, green, and blue channels that exist in web-based images. So it's very similar in some respects. In other respects, it's, it's completely different. And of course, you can also use it to enhance the colors just from a red, green, or blue perspective as well. So you're, you're probably starting to get the idea that you have a lot of control over how your image appears.